The congregation, please rise as we join together in our processional hymn, What a Friend We Have in Jesus, as printed in the bulletin. Martha Hamdorf was born May 7, 1920, on the family farm in Washington Township, rural Lamars, Iowa, to Fred and Annie Kuhn. She was baptized into the Lutheran faith on August 8, 1920, and confirmed on March 25, 1934. She became a member of Trinity Lutheran Church in Loudoun in July of 1961. Martha attended a country school through eighth grade and later earned her high school diploma through correspondence programs. On the farm, Martha could be seen driving a team of horses through the fields and later tractors. Martha had a spirit of adventure that unfolded in her decisions in life. She became a dental assistant and was proud to have a good job to provide for herself. She married Harry Hamdorf on November 17, 1953 at St. John's Lutheran, Lamars, Iowa. She moved across the state to Loudoun, Iowa, where Harry lived, and they farmed together on their homestead. He passed away on July 10, 1971. She always remained active in her community, singing in the choir at Trinity Lutheran, playing cards with the ladies, and sewing. Martha was known for small, even hand stitches in creating masterpieces in masterpiece quilts. She made the decision in May of 2006 to move closer to family in Arizona. Martha was one of the first residents to move into McDowell Village in Scottsdale. She promptly joined their first choir and enjoyed spending time with her circle of friends. Martha was called to her eternal home on Wednesday, November 15th, 2023. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
in holy baptism, Martha was clothed with the robe of Christ's righteousness that covered all her sin. St. Paul says, do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death in order that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall he makes me lie down in green pastures. He, leads me beside still waters. he restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, for you are with me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. And your brothers and sisters in Christ, the Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God of grace and mercy, we give thanks for your loving kindness shown to Martha and to all your servants, who having finished their course in faith, now rest from their labors. Grant that we also may be faithful unto death and receive the crown of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The Old Testament reading comes from the prophet Isaiah, the 25th chapter, beginning at the 6th verse. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wine, of rich food full of marrow, of aged wine well refined. And he will swallow up on this mountain the covering that is cast over all peoples, the veil that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. And the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces, and the reproach of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Behold, this is our God. We have waited for him that he might save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. And this is the word of the Lord. I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? He will not let your foot slip. The epistle reading comes from the Revelation of St. John, the 21st chapter. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them and they will be his people, and God himself will be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain any more, for the former things have passed away. And he who was seated on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. Also he said, Write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. And he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give from the spring of the water of life without payment. The one who conquers will have this heritage, and I will be his God, and he will be my son. And this is the word of the Lord. Be to God. Rise for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel comes according to St. John, the third chapter. 
Jesus said, No one has ascended into heaven except he who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment. The light has come into the world, and people loved the darkness rather than the light, because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light, and does not come to the light, lest his works should be exposed. But whoever does what is true comes to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that his works have been carried out in God. And this is the gospel of our Lord. God has made us his people through our baptism into Christ. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. What will it be like when my pain is gone and all the worries of this world just fade away? What will it be like when you call my name and in that moment when I see you face to face? I'm waiting my whole life to hear you say, Well done, well done, faithful one. Welcome to the place where you belong. Well done, well done, my beloved child. You have run the race and now you're home. Welcome to the place where you belong. What will it be like when tears are washed away and every broken thing will finally be made whole? What will it be like when I come into your glory Standing in the presence of a love so beautiful. I'm waiting my whole life for that day. I will live my life to hear you say, Well done, well done, my good and faithful one. Welcome to the place where you belong. Well done, well done, my beloved child. You have run the race and now 
your home. Welcome to the place where you belong. What will it be like when I hear that sound? All of heaven's angels crying out, singing holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. Singing holy, holy, Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, friends and family of Martha, what a sad day this is as we gather together to bid farewell to such a wonderful woman. I never met Martha, and I won't insult you by pretending that I have, but I've heard many stories about her in my years here at Loudoun. I've heard many fond memories from her friends and her family, and the fact that you all took the effort to be here today, to bid, her farewell, to bid her farewell, all of that speaks to the kind of person that Martha was. Martha was blessed in so many ways, with family, friends, a long life, and from what I understand, pretty good health right up to the end. In so many ways, and to so many people, Martha truly was a gift from God. And so as we gather together today, brought together by her passing, we're not here just to share in each other's sadness. Martha would not have wanted that. We are here to celebrate the long life that God has given to her and to rejoice in how he blessed us through that long life. But even more than just looking back at the good old days that are now gone, we also rejoice in the eternal life that Martha now knows in full. By grace, through faith, Martha now dwells for all eternity in the loving arms of God singing out his praise forever in that perfect paradise of heaven. Even as we celebrate Martha's life that was so full of blessings, we rejoice that this is just the beginning. By the grace of God, Martha enjoyed over 103 years of blessings. Out of curiosity, I looked it up and found out that she had about 38,055 days of life, including the nine months before she was born. Over 913,000 hours, almost 54.8 million minutes. And every second of it was a blessing from God. How many sunrises and harvests do you think she saw in those years? How many songs did she sing? How many meals did she cook for her loved ones? All those memories, all the love of her family and friends, all the good times shared with so many people, Every second of her life was a gift from God, a blessing to Martha and to all those around her. Now, of course, things were not always perfect. 
In those years, she saw a world war and so many other wars and skirmishes. She endured the Great Depression. She personally felt pain, sorrow, sadness, as she lost friends, family members, her husband, as she experienced medical problems, lost her ability to get around and do as many of the things that she wanted to do. And finally, a week ago, she experienced death. All of this, all of the pain and frustration and suffering that we experience, it is because we live in a broken and fallen world and because she herself was a sinner, just like all of us. This sin is the root of all pain and suffering and has been from the beginning. Without sin, none of the bad things in this world would take place. There'd be no fear, no shame, no worry, no sorrow, no pain. All these things are the result of sin in the world around us and sin within our own lives. And ultimately, death itself comes only as a result of this sin this disobedience to God's holy word. Yes, for as wonderful of a woman as Martha was, she too was a sinner. For all the good memories we will have of Martha, for all the blessings she brought to so many people, Martha, sadly, was a sinner. And she freely confessed that fact so many times in her life as she attended church here and elsewhere in her daily prayers and devotions in God's word. And as she confessed that sin, she did so with confidence, not taking pride in the wrong that she had done or bragging about what she had gotten away with, but clinging with absolute certainty to the forgiveness given her by her Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Knowing that because of her sin, she could do nothing to justify herself in the eyes of God, but also knowing that despite her sin, she was forgiven, she was cleansed, she was redeemed by God himself. Not maybe, not hopefully, not if I'm really good from this point forward. In fact, not based on anything at all that Martha or you or I or anyone can do. Martha confessed her sins, confident and certain in forgiveness, because God himself had paid the price of her iniquity in full. One of the Bible passages that was particularly dear to Martha was Revelation 2, verse 10, where Jesus promises, be faithful unto death, and I will give you the crown of eternal life. For 103 years, through joy and sorrow, through good times and bad, Martha was indeed faithful, repenting of her transgressions, clinging to the precious word of God, even when looking death in the eyes. And now, by the grace, mercy, and love of God, despite her sin, she has been given the crown of eternal life. And this is why today, through our tears, we can rejoice, not just for Martha, but for each and every one of us. For despite sin's power in our life, Jesus Christ came to defeat sin and to give us the victory. Jesus Christ, God himself, humbled himself to take on our flesh. He laid aside his glory to walk among his sinful and rebellious creation. He willingly endured the same temptations that we ourselves face, but he overcame where we failed. He suffered the mockery of those he came to save. He endured unimaginable physical pain at our hands. And there on the cross, he gave his very life to pay the penalty for the sins of all mankind. He gave himself as a perfect sacrifice to fulfill that perfect law that we had broken. He shed his blood and took our place, dying the death that we had earned. He laid down his perfect and holy life to give us sinners eternal life. And on that first Easter morning, he rose again to give us the victory, the promise, the absolute assurance of our own resurrection. By our sin, we deserve to be cast out of God's presence forever. But by grace, through faith in Jesus Christ alone, we know that we have been cleansed of our sin and declared holy, innocent, and righteous in the eyes of God Almighty. Because of that, Martha and I and all who believe in Christ Jesus will live for all eternity. Not just coming back again to this sinful earth for another imperfect go-around, but living for all eternity, never to die again in that perfect paradise of heaven prepared for us by Jesus Christ himself. The 103 years that Martha lived here, they seem so long, but they are but the blink of an eye 
compared to the eternal life she is given in Christ Jesus. The sorrows and sadness that she endured here on earth, they are a thing of the past, not even remembered anymore. The many joys that she experienced in all those years, they pale in comparison to the perfect joy she now has in heaven. There in heaven, there is no more suffering, pain, or sorrow, no more sickness, hurting, no more sadness, no more death. Only the perfect and eternal joy of being in the presence of God forever, willingly serving him day and night and being served by him as he perfectly provides everything. Never having to wonder when it will end, for the joy of heaven is eternal, everlasting. It will never come to an end. This is what God has promised to each of us. This is what Martha clung to even in times of great sorrow and pain. This is why we can rejoice even in the midst of our tears. When someone like Martha has been with you in your life for so long and then is gone, it leaves a hole that simply cannot be filled by anyone else. In the days, the weeks, even the years ahead, we are going to feel that sadness of separation that Martha's death brings upon us. And it is not wrong to feel that sadness. It is not a lack of faith to feel hurt from that loss. But we do not mourn as those who have no hope. For we know without a doubt that Martha's life of blessings here on earth, they were but the very beginning of her eternal life of blessing in heaven. And by the faith given us by the word of God, washed clean by the blood of Jesus Christ, strengthened and nourished by the power of the Holy Spirit, we look forward to that time when we will be reunited with Martha and with all who have gone before us in the one true faith. And we look forward to that day with more than just hope. We look to it in certainty and in bold confidence, trusting in those blessed words of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Be faithful unto death, and I will give you the crown of eternal life. For by the cross of Jesus Christ alone, by his empty tomb alone, you are forgiven of every one of your sins, and eternal life in heaven is yours. To God alone be all glory, now and forever. Amen. And now that peace of God which surpasses all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in true faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. We continue with our next hymn, I'm But a Stranger Here.
we rise for prayer. Almighty God, Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise for the life you granted to your servant Martha. We thank you for all the blessings you poured out upon each of us through her and for all the joyous memories of her that we will cherish. We thank you especially that by your word you proclaimed your precious gospel message of forgiveness to Martha in many ways throughout her life. Give to us the peace that comes from knowing that word and having real faith in it, that we may have true comfort in times of sorrow. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Be with us in our grief, O Lord. Grant us that consolation and peace which can come only from you. Strengthen our faith, lift our hearts, and give to us absolute assurance of life everlasting, sealed for us by our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Direct our saddened eyes to your cross, that we may know true peace and joy, even in our darkest days. Lord, in your mercy. Most merciful God, we rejoice that you have come to us in the flesh, that you have taken upon yourself the sins of the world, and that you have won for each of us the free gift of salvation. Lead us by your word to live lives that proclaim that forgiveness to all those around us. Help us to live by your word throughout our lives in all of our thoughts, words, and deeds. Speak through us in what we do and what we say, that others may hear your word and be brought to true faith in Christ. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord of mercy, we pray for all those who do not trust in your love and forgiveness. By your word, work faith in the hearts of those who do not believe, and turn back the hearts of those who have strayed from your church. Open their eyes to see your truth, that they may not find themselves in eternal condemnation upon their death, but may live in the constant assurance of your promise of salvation through Jesus Christ alone. Speak your word through us, that they too may rejoice with us in your love, both here on earth and for all eternity in heaven. Lord, in your mercy. Console us, O Lord, in the days and years ahead as we mourn Martha's death. Give us the comfort that this world cannot give as you speak to us by your word. Touch our hearts, fill us with faith, and lead us to look forward to that glorious reunion of all believers on the last day. Lord, in your mercy. All this and whatever else you know that we need, we ask in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, ever one God, world without end. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. He who believes in me will live even though he dies, and whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Lord, now you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. He who believes in me will live, even though he dies, and whoever lives and believes in me will never die. And dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord God, our shepherd, you gather the lambs of your flock into the arms of your mercy and bring them home. Comfort us with the certain hope of the resurrection to everlasting life and a joyful reunion with those we love who have died in the faith. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 
Let us bless the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. Let us go forth in peace. The congregation, please remain standing for our closing hymn, I Know That My Redeemer Lives. <laughs>